Hey everybody, welcome back to the Let's Code series. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at a, uh, some text editors. So I did a whole bunch of videos talking about uh, text editors, like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, like ten of them? Ten? Wow, ten of them. Uh, and this is sort of an unorganized mess. I was uh, just sort of trying to figure out what the best text editor to use was for like web design, and, you know, which one I liked the most. And uh, I think that was a good idea. <laughs> ten videos dedicated to this is crazy. Uh, so I thought we'd just do like a little roundup and then all these videos will be uh, replaced on the playlist just by this one video. So uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, first of all, we'll take a look at uh, a few things, Atom and uh, VS Code. And I'm taking a look at these together because they are remarkably similar apps. They're both built on Electron. One was built by GitHub. One was built by Microsoft. Turns out maybe those two companies aren't as different as we thought they were. And they both are really spectacular. They're both very simple, like text editors on the surface uh, to the point that you really rely on these extensions, which also means that there's a huge community of people developing extensions for both of these apps. Everything from like themes to plugins to uh, you know, changing key bindings, all sorts of things that make the experience better. Uh, I believe VS Code, for example, doesn't even support syntax for CSS out of the box. So you have to download an extension for that, um, which sounds dumb, I guess. But that's really the crux of these two apps is they're very simple text editors. They're built on Electron. Uh, they both play pretty nicely with Git and GitHub uh, and allow you to do commits and uh, things very easily from right in the uh, app itself. So that's really nice, but you rely quite a bit on extensions. So, you know, keep that in mind. But they're both very, very good. I think if you're a first time uh, user, these would be spectacular for you. Either one of them are great. The one thing to keep in mind is that uh, Electron does have a reputation for being sort of slow and resource heavy. And that's what both of these apps are built on. Uh, I personally haven't had re any real issues. You know, I'll uh, keep an eye on the the system resources while I'm using the apps and I don't have much of an issue with it, but you know, keep that in mind. Uh, if you do have an issue with Atom or Electron though, the next best thing is Sublime. This is another uh, GUI text editor that is very simple, which I mean, I, I almost every text editor is very simple, but the thing about Sublime is that it has like a huge community of people using it, which is true of Atom and VS Code and everything else that we'll talk about. Uh, but Sublime in particular is a very old app. It's probably the oldest one. Well, not the second oldest one that I'll mention today. So it, it's very, it's been developed for a very, very long time. There is a paid version, but you can use the free version for free for almost everything. You know, one of the flagship features of Sublime is this option to do multiple cursors where you can just select multiple lines of text and type on all of them at the same time, which is super, super smart and handy. Yeah, I don't think it's as handy as people say it is, but when you need it, it's like the best tool for the job. And it's also not like it'll just add text to the beginning of the line. You can definitely type at the end of a line as well. So it's very, very nice and handy. The only thing that I don't like about Sublime is it seems to be less of an IDE if you will, like it, it doesn't have as great of uh, support with Git as the other text editors we mentioned do, VS Code and Atom. Uh, it doesn't really have like a sidebar. It seems to be much more focused on just editing one file at a time, which is fine. It's just still not really scratching the itch for me. So we arrive at my personal favorite text editor. Let me uh, clear some of this stuff out. I don't know what the heck is going on here. We'll just close out of that. And that is a great little text editor called Vim. And you may or may not have heard of Vim. It's almost sort of a meme in some sense. And, and just so you know, you don't have to use Vim on the command line like I am. There is a, uh, a, a GUI app that you can download. It's called Mac Vim. It works fine. It's really great. You know, there it is right there. It's, it's a great app. I recommend it. But the weird thing about Vim is that there's a, a sort of sacrifice that you make using Vim in that there's a very real time penalty when you're learning how to use the app. If you, if you think about it, you're only ever really able to type as fast as you can type. Like if I, if I type 80 words a minute in text edit, I'm not gonna type 100 words a minute just by using Microsoft Word. So where the real speed or you know at least perceived speed comes in with any type of text editor or word processing program is in your ability to edit text, to quickly make changes and, and to navigate the text. And this is especially true of web design and programming where, I mean, huge swaths of what you do is just editing code that's already been written. So that's really where Vim comes in. It really is built 
to just edit text as quickly as possible. But the thing about Vim is that it functions entirely based off the keyboard. You do everything that you'll do, whether it's file navigation, editing anything, replacing, opening files, closing files, uh, selections, everything you do via the keyboard, which when you first start using Vim will create a very, very real time penalty. You really do have to make a commitment to using this app, which is sort of unusual for a text editor. You know, most text editors uh, aim to just be like the tool that you can pick up right off the shelf and use immediately and like better than all your other text editors. That's the, uh, the basically the exact opposite of Vim. There's a, a real learning curve that you don't get with any other app, and it's to the point that you will literally be slower in Vim than any other app you use for a little while. Uh, but the really great thing about Vim is that it is wildly customizable. Uh, if I were to open up my VimRC, uh, this is just a preferences file for Vim where you set up everything you want to do. You can install various plugins, same way you do with almost any other editor. You can set themes. You can set all sorts of different settings for the app. You know, everything from tab or spaces to syntax to every little thing. I've set up custom key bindings for some things here. And with a little bit of tweaking, you can do everything that you can do in any other text editor. You know, for example, um, almost all of the plugins that are available for Atom or Sublime or VS Code are definitely available for them. And even some of the features that you might think are exclusive to those apps aren't so exclusive. You know, you want to do multiple curses in Vim? There is a built-in way to do that within Vim. It's a little less like sexy, but it works and it works really, really well. The thing is there's there's a lot of memes around Vim and I feel like a lot of Vim users want to pretend that this app is like remarkably difficult. Um, the truth is there's a built-in program called Vim Tutor as soon as you install Vim. And this is a really nice, simple guide that will tell you basically everything you need to know to get started using Vim. It probably takes 20 minutes to go through. And if you go through this guide every day for a week, week and a half, you'll be up to par. You know, you'll know everything you need to know to start. Uh, you know, so it's not terribly difficult to learn, but it does take like a time commitment. If you're not a fan of Vim, VS Code is great. Atom is great. There's plenty of other really, really great apps that you can use. You know, uh, the best thing I can say is just pick one that you like and uh, get started. Um, those are my recommendations, but uh, I will see you in the uh, rest of the videos where we hopefully actually start making a website. So, uh, you know, thanks for watching.